Leo, as you know, is the latest, hottest, hunkiest teen idol there is. Yeah, his muscles. <laughs> Look, speaking of hunky, huh? Recently, a video popped up on the social media site X, which people used to call Twitter, and it's been getting a lot of buzz. This video shows a young Leonardo DiCaprio hanging out with Brian Peck back in the early days of DiCaprio's acting journey. This peek into the past has sparked a lot of talk and strong feelings from fans of the famous actor. In the clip, we see Leonardo DiCaprio, who would later become a huge star with big movies like Titanic, looking young and maybe a bit innocent next to Peck. The way they interact in the video has caused quite a stir and a lot of concern on social media. Fans of DiCaprio in particular have been pretty upset and uncomfortable seeing how casual Brian Peck seems to be around the young actor. This has led to lots of worries about what their relationship was like back then. The main worry is that Leonardo DiCaprio, being so new to the acting world and pretty young, might not have understood what was really going on in his interactions with Peck. Fans are saying that DiCaprio, because of his youth and lack of experience at that time, could have been in a situation he didn't fully get or recognize the potential problems. Seeing this video pop up again on social media hasn't just made people rethink old news, but also sparked a much bigger chat about what life is like for young actors in showbiz. As the talk goes on, everyone seems really worried about keeping these young stars, like DiCaprio back when he was just starting, safe and sound in Hollywood. In this video that's come back to the spotlight on X, what we all knew as Twitter, we catch a young Leonardo DiCaprio in a fun but kind of bold exchange with Brian Peck. DiCaprio throws out a line saying, Brian is the famous artist, and we always make fun of each other and portray each other in silly, satirical ways, while he lightly touches Peck's shirt buttons. Then, things get a tad awkward when Peck says, Leo, as you know, is the latest, hottest, hunkiest teen out there. And he's like, look, speaking of hunky, making a young DiCaprio show off his muscles. This video on its own is enough to get you thinking, but when you throw in the recent accusations from Drake Bell, it really makes you see Brian Peck in a new light. Peck, who had some legal trouble back in 2004 is now being looked at all over again because of what's come out. Drake Bell, once a child star, is now stepping forward with a heavy story he's never shared before. The assault he endured at just 15 years old. He's bravely opening up in an upcoming TV series titled Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, which will air on March 17th and 18th. In this revealing documentary, Drake Bell discloses that he was victimized by Brian Peck, who served as a dialogue coach on Nickelodeon shows like All That and The Amanda Show. Bell was a member of the Amanda Show cast from 1999 to 2002 before headlining his own Nickelodeon series, Drake and Josh, starting in 2004. Peck found himself in legal trouble when he was arrested in August 2003 on 11 charges related to accusations of assaulting an unnamed person. In May 2004, Peck pleaded no contest to committing a lewd act upon a 14 or 15-year-old and to oral copulation with a person under 16. Consequently, he was sentenced to 16 months in prison and, in October 2004, was required to register as a SA offender. For more than two decades, Drake Bell kept it a secret that he was the minor involved in that legal case. Learning that Drake Bell faced such challenges during his early days as a child actor is truly disheartening. This revelation sheds a troubling light on Bell's history, particularly against the backdrop of the legal troubles he has encountered. Drake Bell, famed for his role on the popular Nickelodeon show Drake and Josh, was sentenced in Cleveland to two years of probation following endangerment charges. These allegations emerged from an event where a young girl, who had initially connected with him online, attended his concert at the age of 15 and subsequently accused him of SA misconduct. Three years ago, Jared Drake Bell, who was 35 and living in West Hollywood, California, owned up to some serious mistakes over a Zoom call. He pleaded guilty, which is a big time felony, and to spreading stuff that's not okay for kids to see, a lesser crime. The judge in Cuyahoga County, Timothy McCormick, decided Drake Bell could serve his two years of probation and do his 200 hours of community service back in California. During his Zoom court appearance before getting his sentence, Bell came clean, saying, I accept this plea because my conduct was wrong. I'm sorry the victim was harmed. It was not my intention. He admitted he messed up and expressed his regret, especially for any harm caused to the victim. Bell's lawyer, Friedman, made a point in court about how Bell's famous life makes things tougher for him, saying, there is already a greater penalty paid by Mr. Bell that others would not 
face because of his position. The charge against Bell for trying to endanger actors came up because of something that happened at one of his concerts. He didn't take care of his responsibilities and put the victim in danger, said Tyler Sinclair, who speaks for the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office. After he agreed to a plea deal, Bell got his sentence in July 2021, two years of probation and 200 hours of helping out in the community. Bell talked about his conviction in a 2021 Instagram video, calling the accusations entirely false and wrong. He said he only took the plea deal to wrap things up quickly. Even though he admitted his actions weren't okay, he said he didn't know how old the girl was, insisting they only messaged each other and never met up. Just a year before this whole mess, in 2020, Drake Bell got caught up in more drama. This time, his ex-girlfriend Melissa Lingefelt dropped some serious accusations against him in a bunch of TikTok videos on a Wednesday night. She talked about verbal and physical AB she says she faced while they were together. Bell swung back with a statement through a rep to Variety, saying he was going to take legal steps. I never AB my ex-girlfriend or did so many of the other things Melissa falsely claimed on her TikTok video, he declared, as our relationship ended more than a decade ago. We, unfortunately, both called each other terrible names, as often happens when couples are breaking up, but that is it. Lingafelt didn't hold back in her video, looking back at her time with Belle, which ended 10 years ago. She talked about going through the worst type of verbal AB you could ever imagine, and said it got physical too, with hitting, throwing, and even being dragged downstairs. First, I would like to start out by saying, I don't really care if anyone believes me, as this is my story and my life and something I went through, she said in her video. It wasn't until recently that I actually realized that AB is something that all women have to go through. When I started dating Drake, I was 16. I was homeschooled, I moved in with him, I was singing. It wasn't until about a year when the verbal AB started. She shared a really scary moment when Belle dragged her down the stairs at their place in Los Feliz. She called it a pinnacle moment in their relationship. My face hit every step on the way down. I have photos of this, she said, laying out the evidence. Lingafelt didn't stop there. She also brought up messages from other women who said they went through similar stuff with Belle. One buddy, whom Lingafelt pointed to as a witness, talked about the arguments and times the cops had to show up. There's this TikTok video where Lingafelt is talking to another one of Belle's exes, Peyton Lopachin. The message kicks off with, I was Drake's girlfriend for five years after you. And it goes on, I will stand by your side and back you up as I went through the same horrible verbal, physical, and mental AB. In response to all these claims, Belle hit back with a comment to Variety, mentioning that Lingafelt had hit him up for some cash help during a tough time last year. I do not know if today's behavior is some kind of misguided quest for more money or attention, he stated, but I cannot and will not let these harsh and defamatory claims slide without a fight, and I'm looking into what legal actions I can take. The newest and maybe the weirdest scandal Bell got tangled in was just last April in 2023. The Daytona Beach Police Department suddenly marked Bell as missing and endangered in a post on Facebook one Thursday morning. When Variety tried to get more info from the police, they clammed up and didn't share anything more. Bell's manager also didn't jump in with any comments when asked. The police report let everyone know that Bell, who's officially called Jared Drake Bell, was last seen driving a 2022 gray BMW. He was last spotted possibly close to Mainland High School right before 9 p.m. The Daytona Beach police were asking anyone with info on where Bell might be to please come forward. Then, on the very same day, the police said they found out the actor was safe and had gotten in touch with them. Bell had something to say about all this on Thursday. He hopped onto Twitter to talk about how weird the whole thing was, but he kept it light, joking. You leave your phone in the car and don't answer for the night and this, and he threw in a laughing emoji to keep things chill. Getting into the gritty details of Drake's early days at Nickelodeon, which probably only scratches the surface of a bigger problem, gives us a bit of insight into why things went the way they did later on. It's like the saying goes, hurt people, hurt people. Now, this doesn't make any bad actions okay, but it does help us see the bigger, more troubling picture. Even sadder is realizing that Drake Bell isn't the only one who's gone through stuff like this, and it's not just a Nickelodeon problem. There are a lot more people out there who've been hurt. We're hoping that documentaries and people bravely sharing their stories can help make a future where everyone feels safer, more protected, and can trust more. Quiet on set, put together by Maxine Productions and Sony Pictures Television, with a helping hand from Business Insider, takes a deep dive into the not-so-great side of the famous kids' shows created by Dan Schneider in the 90s and early 2000s. Mary Robertson and Emma Schwartz directed this docuseries, bringing to light the issues that were happening off-camera in these well-loved shows. In 2022, Business Insider B.I. took a deep dive into Dan Schneider's world of children's TV. They chatted with ex-child star 
stars and crew from shows like The Amanda Show, Zoe 101, and Victorious. What they found was that Schneider had a way of making the set feel weird and kind of off-putting. Way back in 2000, someone writing for The Amanda Show complained about gender discrimination and a really unfriendly work vibe, pointing the finger at Schneider for constantly asking for massages. This got settled quietly with some money-changing hands, but no one's spilling how much. B.I. also got the scoop from others who said Schneider liked to add scenes that were a bit too grown up and wanted the young female leads to dress in a way that was definitely not kid-friendly. Then in 2018, Schneider and Nickelodeon decided to call it quits. Despite all that went down, Russell Hicks, who used to be the big boss of content and production at Nickelodeon, stood by Schneider. He told Business Insider in 2022 that everything Schneider did got the green light after some serious checking. While the spotlight is on Drake Bell and Brian Peck, Dan Schneider is another figure at Nickelodeon who's come under fire. Over the years, he's faced a bunch of complaints. Even the fans, who loved the shows he was behind, started noticing things that just didn't sit right, like weird scenes and scripts. Dan Schneider was a big deal at Nickelodeon, but now there's a whole docuseries diving into his time there and all the allegations of bad stuff happening, from AB and SA to inappropriate actions with the younger members of the cast and crew. The fall of Schneider's reign at Nickelodeon, once a powerhouse of kids' TV, is going to be peeled apart in a new four-part docuseries on investigation discovery called Quiet On Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Quiet On Set is packed with one-of-a-kind interviews with the child stars and crew who worked on Schneider's projects. A lot of them are breaking their silence for the first time ever, dishing out the real scoop on what went down behind the scenes. <laughs> Schneider hit it big in the kids' TV scene with the 90s hit The Amanda Show, making Amanda Bynes a household name. His winning streak kept up through the 2000s with smash hits like Zoe 101, iCarly, and Victorious, launching stars like Bynes and Ariana Grande into the spotlight. But now, the glow from these beloved shows is getting overshadowed by a bunch of serious accusations against Schneider. Claims of a nasty work atmosphere he supposedly created have really smeared the reputation of these iconic shows that once ruled the airwaves. The spotlight on the alleged bad vibes on set was cranked up by an investigation from B.I.'s Kate Taylor in August 2022, laying the groundwork for the docuseries Quiet on Set. Right after Jeanette McCurdy, famous for playing Sam Puckett on iCarly and its spin-off Sam and Cat, spilled the beans on her tough times at Nickelodeon in her hit book I'm Glad My Mom Died, Business Insider dropped their bombshell expose. In her tell-all, McCurdy talks about a big shot she calls The Creator, who was way too controlling and put her through a lot of emotional mess. She shares how this person pushed her to drink before she was old enough, lost it at her during a makeout scene, and made sure bikinis were part of her wardrobe options. On top of Taylor's deep dive, which featured chats with actors, writers, and crew who worked with Schneider on his shows, even more troubling stories pop it up. Alexa Nicholas, who bounced from Zoe 101 after playing Nicole Bristow for two seasons, told Business Insider that being on set was downright traumatizing, and a seasoned writer slammed it as a maddening, disgusting, controlling little bubble. Daniela Monet from Victorious didn't hold back either when talking to B.I. She pointed out that some of the costumes for characters were not age appropriate and didn't hide her unhappiness with the show having too many close for comfort scenes. The investigation didn't stop there. It also shed light on Schneider's awkward requests for massages from adult female colleagues and brought up a gender discrimination and hostile workplace complaint from way back in 2000. After the Business Insider article dropped and word got out about the docuseries that's on its way, Someone speaking for Dan Schneider hit back, Dan really cared for the kids on his shows, even when, sadly, their own families sometimes didn't. He got what they were dealing with and stood by them like no one else. Let's not forget, a lot of these young stars had to deal with the crazy stress of being their family's main moneymaker. Then pile on the tough stuff about growing up, all while being in the limelight and working like crazy. And remember, they're just kids. That's why you've got a whole army of standards, folks. Executives, lawyers, teachers, and parents all over the set, all the time. But even with all that, growing up in showbiz is tough, and Dan knew that better than anyone. Don't forget to hit like on this video and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay awesome.